And welcome to everybody who's joining us on Zoom out there in Facebook world. You are here in the virtual b and event space with Matthew Ludak. I'm Derek Fosbender. I'm going to be moderating. So we're here with Matthew, Pandemic Portraits, capturing a sign of the times. Um, I saw Matthew's work recently through mutual friends of mine, and I, I'm participating in a lot of photography forums, and it just instantly stood out. So I do a lot of photo critiques. I'm very big on when you first look at an image, what is your... What is your immediate emotion? Do you feel something? And I looked at your work and I was like, man, I went through your entire feed and I'm like, all right, I got sick of liking photos. I didn't want to berate you with notifications. That's why you're here right now. That's why I invited the b &H world to come look at your work. I think what you're doing is so relevant. It's beautifully done. Um, and out of all the people I've seen out there doing it, you're one of the best. So introduce us to yourself, Matthew, and let us know, uh, why you started this, where you got your start, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you for that wonderful intro. That's uh, very nice of you to say. And um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a photographer. Feels a little weird saying that, but yeah, I'm a photographer from uh, Lambertville, New Jersey. And um, I didn't study like formally in school or anything. I just kind of did it as a hobby. But then uh, my father was a photographer, so I got, you know, I'd have always had it around. But um, I've been, you know, doing sort of working on independent projects, most of them not portrait related necessarily. Um, but then when this COVID-19 happened and it kind of was like, all right, I can't be going out driving around, you know, exploring what I was usually doing. So I was like, all right, what can I do that's timely, that's, you know, documenting this thing, you know, for, for myself, a lot of it. Um, and that, you know, I... I'm still able to get out and shoot. So I originally started by thinking, all right, if I put out a, something on my face, on the town's Facebook page saying like, hey, does anyone want to participate? I'll come by, you can be, you know, six to 10 feet away, you can be inside, you can be wherever you want, and I'll take a portrait of you. Um, and I was kind of expecting to get like a few responses. And then like two days later, I had like 50 people said, yeah, come by. I had people like, I was thinking it'd be in my small town. I had people being like, will you come to Philadelphia to take photos of me? And I had to kind of be like, yeah, no, it's not really what I'm trying, trying to do with this. Like, I'm sorry. I'd love to take your photo, but uh, kind of goes against the whole, like not traveling right now thing. Um, but yeah, so I'll just start with some of the photos. And if you have any questions or if you want to put a pause on one, just uh, just let me know. But this first one is uh, is my friend's little brother. And uh, I was kind of thinking this is such an interesting time for, for young kids. Oops, let's see. For young kids, uh, just because they, they kind of have an understanding of what's going on. Like they hear their family talking about what's going on, but like they might not quite understand the severity of the situation. So when I went by his house, I was kind of like, he wanted to come give me a hug. I was like, nah, we can't, we can't do that right now. But if you go over there and you want your picture taken, I'll take a picture with you. And like, so this was, uh, this was the look he gave me. And um, he's a pretty photogenic kid, so it worked out. I think it's interesting, you know, you talked about, and that's one of the things I wonder, and it's funny because you already answered one of my questions about your work without even, you know, it being asked about the Facebook post. And it's like, I saw these images and it's like, I always hate, I like when photographers let you in on behind their photos, but I respect the privacy. Me being a photographer, I'm, I'm open, but I know some photographers are very guarded with their approach. And I thought that was very interesting. Like, cause I'm like, you know, is he just walking around or does he know everybody or what's, you know? So I, I find that that's super interesting. The fact that you said, way more response than you thought especially because what you're seeing all over it's like man i walk by people on the sidewalk and 10 feet isn't enough they're like running into the bike lane to get away from me yeah the funny thing is is like some people who i've i guess this is just like anything some people have taken it very seriously and then i've had other people where I, you know i get their information i go to their house then they come outside and they're like oh nice to meet you i'm like now nah, we're like stay like let's six to ten feet pandemic portraits like <laughs> some people just it's it's hard. They want to like, you're meeting someone new. You want to come introduce yourself. But, um, yeah, so this was actually, this photo was the first one I took, um, for this project and, uh, his mother and daughter reached out and they were super excited. And, uh, 
I think, you know, in a lot of ways, it's like if there wasn't a pandemic, I really doubt people would be as excited about me coming by and taking their photos because they're just looking for some sort of human interaction. Because it's like any other time when you're like, oh, yeah, I'll come by your house at 730 in the morning. They'd be like, no. But now they're like, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> but uh, How much time are you spending? So something like this, are you, is it just like a pass, quick pass by? What kind yeah, of engagement? It's like five, probably most of them less than five minutes. It's just like, I don't want to, you know, take up too much of their time. And I honestly, I probably could spend more time and like work on it a little more. I doubt a lot of people would care, but like, that's my own thing where I'm like, oh, I got to rush myself. I don't want to be a, you know, a burden on these people. But that's the fun. I've had all these people respond and be like, yeah, don't worry about it. I have nothing to do for like for the foreseeable future. So it's, yeah. it's fine, but. Not going anywhere for the next two months. Take your time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, I guess I kind of, I like the idea. I mean, there's been so many great photographers who have like done the same, you know, all of our photos are kind of similar. It's like the sort of through the glass looking at people. And um, I guess it's been like kind of a combination of, because I, I started out through Facebook, but then I had, you know, friends and people I know, like I reached out to them, they reached out to me. Oh, can I be, can I do this? And it's like, sure, you know, no. I, I didn't want it to be a, any sort of specific, like, oh, I'm only taking pictures of, like, people in my town or strangers. Like, it's a, the project has definitely evolved as it's uh, gone on. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, like, my neighbors from directly across the street. And, like, I didn't always know they're there. So I just, like, you know, when, <laughs> when they went outside on the porch, I was like, hey, uh, in 30 minutes, can you, like, stand in your window and I'll take some photos of you? And that's pretty much how most of my stuff ends up going what how much how much thought are you putting into you know we we talk a lot about you know snapshot photography mm -hmm. um where where stuff where you know you're it's more from a photojournalistic standpoint versus fine art more finely tuned well crafted putting more forethought into images how much thought are you putting into all the stuff that we learn as photographers that make an image more engaging are you paying attention to that as much as you are in your other projects or is it more just about are you placing the focus on documenting i'd say it's like probably 60 40 it's definitely more on just documenting because like in my other stuff it's a lot of kind of a landscape or like it's documentary stuff but it's a lot of landscape and there's usually not people in the photos so i can like the only thing i have to worry about is the light changing or missing the light so i can take my time you know for this i take my time but it's also like you know, I don't want to keep people moving around their house and like trying. So it's like, okay, if I see it, I see it and I get it. If not, like, you know, I, I work with what I have. And um, like for something like this, because I know, you know, my neighbors and I'm always seeing their house, I kind of had an idea in my head, like, okay, this might work as an image. But for a lot of them, it's just like, they give me a street address and I show up and it's like, okay, yeah, this is hard because like, you live on the third story and you don't really have a window and like, we're going to see, we're going to try to make this work, but you know, it's just luck of the draw really. Some people's where they're able to, you know, their houses or their apartments are like, for whatever reason, have like something very photogenic about them, but not everyone, you know, I, I find it. Yeah. I find it interesting. And that's why I asked is because, you know, we're, we're trained, we're cultured as photographers to, look at everything from an aesthetic purpose, even in photojournalism, you know, we celebrate amazing captures in photojournalism. And like that image, that last one is like, it's an un, unideal lighting situation. Yeah. You have these two lamps on the outside that aren't, they're clearly not casting in on the faces and then they're backlit and it's this unflattering incandescent light, but none of that matters. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, you putting the focus, you know, there's so many people that I think would put, put more effort into, well, let me, they're not really lit well. Let me light them well. Let me get, you know, I think it's just that minimalist approach is what's so beautiful and so real. It adds just, it's a refreshing sense of somebody who clearly is an artist honed in on a vision and not worried about, you know, the throwing out the rule book, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I don't even want to give myself that much credit, to be honest. It's more for, at least for me, it's kind of like, I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm trying to like document it as real as I can get. Like, as like, yeah, this is like what their evening would look like. Like, this is just how it's going to, like, they're not going to have like 
necessarily like mood lighting or they're not going to be like you know it's like no this is like okay this is where you guys are at right now i'm going to take your picture and i'm gonna like this is we're gonna do it you know what i mean um yeah yeah it's definitely not like it's not like fine art portraiture and uh, like it's, I, yeah. and, and i love that and and for the record that is me that is me stroking your ego that is not him he, <laughs> that's what I, I look i looked at your images and a lot it's it's just that humble nature that comes through that really that speaks almost as loud as the photos themselves you know when you have somebody who's not a lot of people seize on on an opportunity like this and it's a great opportunity for opportunists to say oh viral you know i can go viral with a pandemic portrait series and i never got that in looking at your images it was just so real so raw yeah in a lot of ways it's been like a, it kind of started as like an exercise because i'm like you know thinking of applying for an mfa and doing you know getting and i'm like okay i need to kind of like start practicing portrait photography because it's not something i do and like what can i do now to sort of practice and i was like okay i'll get i'll give this a shot so that's like really where it like came out of and just having like this is my high school history teacher and i was just like hey john i need to come by and take your photo so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do that right now he's like yeah that's i've not you know come by take my photo take everyone's photo so uh but yeah, it's, um, I guess, yeah, it really, a lot of it, like, I don't want to say it came from a place of like boredom, but it was, it came from a place of being like, okay, I, I feel like that need to be like doing something creative and not really knowing where, like, I would never have assumed that I've had like the success I've had with this series, like not for a second, but I thought like anything would have come of it other than like, yeah, I post on my Instagram and my neighbors see it, but Oh, there's definitely definitely something to be said for that um yeah i guess and then so i kind of it started off i was taking photos of uh like my neighbors sort of inside or outside their house and then i kind of was like okay maybe i should like transition it to working with like taking photos of also like essential workers people who are like you know not everyone is able to work from home so and that's like a huge that's probably the biggest side of this like the the actual story of you know what's been going on now is who is able to and who isn't and why are the people who aren't able to you know seemingly on the short end of so many of the sticks so uh i kind of wanted to transition into that um this is again this is uh, my friend's older brother who was just uh we were social distancing and uh it, it, it's just, it's a bizarre time to be coming home or to be home. It's the weather's getting nice and it's just like, oh yeah, well, we'll like talk from each other from like 10 yards away and never, you know, <laughs> have no like physical interaction or anything. It's kind of, it's a little weird. I got to ask, you see <laughs> a lot of people that um, have shot images on, on 9-11 that revisit Mm. the the people the subjects of their 9-11 images is it something that you've considered and once this whole thing is over and life I, I was gonna say gets back to normal but life moves on and who knows where we're gonna go from here is it something have you put any forethought in or are you kind of just living in the moment I really haven't thought about that I mean it's like it it is our world is gonna I do think our society is gonna change um and just like you know how we go about things and daily sort of business but um i haven't really thought about uh this as like a long-term revisiting thing um but yeah that's definitely a, you gave me my next project so thank you for my <laughs> Damn, i can't use that one now yeah um yeah but um just uh and so i i, I also did these photos of uh my mother both my parents are for like teachers but my mom is a, a k through a learning specialist teacher and um so the the students she's already worked or works with normally are already you know they're having they're struggling in in you know some traditional learning things or maybe they're you know reading isn't at a the level they want it to be at just whatever and um so when she found out that she was going to be having to do these zoom things and it's like this is such an interesting like interesting might not be the right word but like yeah children who are already having some trouble learning you know we're putting them on an ipad and being like okay now we're doing this and um so i thought you know to document this sort of just like what was going on around my house uh what are they feeding that cat that cat yeah no we don't know it's, i think the amount of people who like 
no, like they, they're like yeah it's a nice picture and all but uh, what, what's going on with that cat there like what, uh, <laughs> that's the first thing i said was damn that's like i wanted to look at the rest of the picture but that cat yeah uh, uh she's like some getting somewhat famous she, yeah we don't all of our cats have always been these like like borderline like feral cats and then like who are like out hunting and stuff and she's just like no nah, i'm just gonna lay here and eat all the food you give to me so i guess it takes all kinds but um yeah uh thank you for noticing that was you know, i was hoping <laughs> so yeah i started going essential businesses and there's none more essential than pizza so uh, of course and uh, I've gotten people who ask me, like, yeah, are like, people really uncomfortable about you taking their photo or do they like it? And like, really, I think a lot of people want their photo to be taken. Like when I went to this place in my town, like I had my camera and before I could even finish saying, hey, can I take your photo? The guy's like, hey, you want to take my photo? That's fine. Take my photo. And I was like, all right, thank you. Thank you. And uh, he's like, yeah, and the, the other guy's like, get the dough. Make sure he sees you making the pizza. And I was like, oh, there we go. So uh, yeah, it's just been definitely for meeting like, meeting new people but also kind of like connecting with the people who i've always known but never on that more than like sort of superficial like hello hello basis which has been interesting well i'll admit those are the those are the images it was the essential workers portraits that really stood out to me mm -hmm. there, were, there was just something dynamic you know this is one of them um i actually was talking about this image i'm i sound like i'm fangirling over here <laughs> um i was talking to this image of uh, about this image with somebody the other day and it's like you can clearly see you know we we're covered with masks we've taken or you would think we've taken expression out of the equation and expression is normally such an important dynamic in portraiture but you haven't it's like you can clearly see she's glowing under the mask and it just it's it tells you something that you know you you didn't try to, you know, like you're not forcing anything. You still captured an emotion, even with her face cover. And I think that's what's so interesting in some of these essential workers, because these are the people that you would think, man, if I was an essential worker and I'm working right now and I'm, I'm at work so that everybody else can live good, I don't know if I'd be smiling. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mention that because like, there's another woman who I she had the mask on. I was like, "Oh, can I take your picture?" She's like, "Should I smile?" And then we kind of both at the same time were like, "Ah, you know, you can't see your face." But it's like <laughs> people are just so, and you can tell, like, because the smile, like, is you know, you see it through the eyes, you see it through the body language. So it's it was kind of interesting to have, or at least to see how people like the mask really doesn't change that much in a sense. Like, there's the obvious, but it's like the smile still comes through, the, the how they are still comes through. And uh, yeah, these are things from my- I have my to ask you, yeah. I get this question all the time with my street portraits. Everybody, they don't care anything else. They just wanna know like, what's your approach? Do you ask people? How do you ask people? And for the first time in my life, I find myself on the other side of the coin. <laughs> what was your approach like? You know, cause it's knowing that people are so apprehensive about any contact during this, what's your approach like when you're, you're coming up to these people? I yeah. mean, clearly you're, you're well received. I all, like, again, it's like whatever your personal approach is, like, as long as you're being respectful, I always ask when I'm taking someone's photo, just cause I don't, I don't really feel comfortable taking their photo. If I'm not asking, like, it's especially something like this, like I'm not a huge fan of kind of like, going up to someone and just putting the camera in their face. And like, it's, I know I really wouldn't want someone to do that to me. So I, I don't really try to do it to other people. And then it's like, you're right. Like in a time like now, like you don't want to just be like getting like super close to someone and being like, Hey, let me get your picture. And like, they might understandably have a negative reaction to that. So, you know, I like for this, I, you know, called the health food store and I told them what I was like doing and what I was looking to do. And they were, yeah, just come by and, you know, I, I would ask, you know, do you mind if I take your photo? And I found that when you ask people, like, the vast majority say yes. Like, it's only a small amount of people who's really like, no, don't, don't take a picture of me. So I think uh, a lot of it has to do with your, your genuine in your nature. It's not exploitative. Um, and kind of leads in, we got a question from the, the audience mm -hmm. about um, if you need permission to print your photos. And I think it, it's different, you know, when we talk about street photography, you can take a picture of whatever, whenever on public property, on private property such as this, it's a little different. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I think probably the more relevant question is the ethical, you know, regardless of the legality, the mm-hmm. ethical approach, you know, your ethical approach. And I think you kind of touched on that there. I mean, you're calling these, these places of business and really letting them know what you're going to do. You're letting them know that you're documenting. If you're respectful, if they say no, you're not really pushing forward, correct? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just, yeah, exactly. I'm, you know, I'm just uh, trying to be as like forthright and open about it as possible. So yeah, I call the places I asked, like, and again, most of the stuff, like, cause I'll have people ask me like, well, what are you going to do with it? And like the reality is like probably nothing. Like it's, you know, this is like a, a lot of it's just a personal project, a thing. And, um, but there's like, I got, I was taking photos of, of another restaurant and uh, I got an email from uh, into it the, and they were, they were like, Oh, we, we want to license these photos. And so that led to me, you know, have, which it turned out fine. The guy, you know, the guy, I know him and there, you know, it was, it was no problem getting the permissions and stuff, but it is cause I'm not getting like, you know, if I was trying to sell this work or if I was trying to, you know, distribute it or, you know, then it would be something else I need to be going back and doing licensing and all that stuff. But it's, it's mostly just, you know, for stuff like, you know, for this or on my Instagram where I'm just, you know, documenting what I see. And, um, and yeah, obviously if I was trying to market it and sell it, I guess I would really be concerned about one is who, like what it's being used for, but then also making sure that the people in the photos were making money off of it. And then that they were also okay with it because they're just doing it like, cause I'm coming up to them and saying, Hey, do you mind? I'm doing this project on essential workers. Could I take your picture? So that's all they're, you know, going into it with. Interesting. So that's the same girl from before, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's her and the manager of the place. And um, yeah, it's, this was probably, this was like right when, because New Jersey, it's hard because New Jersey had uh, like New Jersey, New York, how they've started, you know, with the mask and stuff. So this was when it was like recommended that you wear a mask if you went in somewhere, but it, or it was required for the employees, but it wasn't like required for P. It, it was bizarre because you had like all the employees wearing them and then all these people coming in and it would just be like, oh, well, it's going to get there regardless if we're not all, you know, in this together sort of thing. But um, yeah. Let's see. This was the woman who she asked, she's like, should I smile? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, oh, wait, you can't see my face. And I was like, it's fine. We can tell you're smiling. I mean, it's, it's telling, like, just the fact that she asked makes, yeah, no. <laughs> makes the experience and it gives you a story, like, that she's, you know, thinking about. That's what she's thinking about when we're living in a time like this. It's interesting to me. Well, I think we're so trained anything with a photo. It's like, you know, like, Oh, should I smile? It's like just like a reaction. So yeah. even what do you want me to do? Do you want me to pose? And yeah. I'm just but, um, so this was a, uh, an ICU nurse who, so, you know, there's sort of like Phil Montgomery, like there's all these tons of photographers are doing amazing work in like hospitals and stuff. And I knew I was never going to get into a hospital to document what's going on there, but I met this ICU nurse through uh the the project and i was like okay what if i come her shift started at 6 30 in the morning and finished at 7 30 at night which is unreal and i was like what if i come i'll come photograph you at the beginning before you go in and then at the end when you're coming out and um she's like yeah she, she was the best and uh so this sort of this is the before and then the after and it was just it I don't think enough credit can be given to the men and women who are working at hospitals and doing all this, uh, this frontline stuff, because it is, it's like <laughs> you got you there, they're risking their lives. And then you have people at the same time who are trying to downplay the severity of it, who are not going to be affected in the same way that any of these uh, nurses or doctors are like, for instance, this woman wasn't even an ICU nurse. The hospital just needed ICU nurses. And they were like, all right, you got three days and then you're an ICU nurse. And, and she had to essentially teach herself a ton of stuff. She was saying she had to do it through YouTube. And, even, yeah. even in the first image, if you can go back to that first image for a second, mm-hmm. 
you look at the difference in expression. And again, we talk about like the, the girl who wanted to smile and you can see so much expression in, you know, me being a street portrait, you know, that's my thing. I love street portraits and every little, you know, the, the dipping of the eyebrows mm-hmm. and you can see so much expression just in her eyes and her eyebrows. It's so different from the other essential workers. It's like, you don't see a smile here. You see a tired face, somebody who's walking into the front lines of a battlefield and it really conveys that. Yeah. And she's like naturally a very sort of smiley, happy-go-lucky person. And, but it, it is like, it's incredible. I can only imagine it is how incredibly stressful it is. And yeah, that she, I mean, that you go back every day and you, and that's just your job and that's, you know it and that's, and you just do it. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I w- my sister's a nurse and I'll say this, they're, they are the most passionate people and selfless people I've seen in any profession. There's so many people that complain about their job and you're like people that are like getting paid to work from home, like a paid vacation to sit on their couch and send a couple of emails and they're complaining. And you have people that are literally putting their lives at risk and the lives of everyone who comes in contact with them and working these long hours. And yeah, they, I mean, really it can't, like you said, it can't be understated and it rolls right into this one here. You again, like the expression just in the eyes alone, it's so, so different from what we were looking at in the earlier photos. Yeah. I mean, I, so I had known the, the woman in the, the other, the nurse, I had known her photos and then she came walking out with this other nurse and he, she, he was just like, Oh, we've heard so much about you. You're like, she's doing, you're doing this project on her. And I was like, yo, you want your photo taken? And he was like, so excited that like, it, it just seemed like so odd to me that he's like, Oh, would you mind taking my photos? Like, would I mind taking your photo? Like, just go working 12 hours saving lives. Like, of course, I wouldn't mind to take your photo. It's, um, yeah, no, it's sort of like the humility and sort of almost like the, like, they're understated. It's really just the humility, what they're, you know, able to do. And it's incredible. And, and then you had when my car broke down and I had to go to the dealership and I got hit with, you know, uh, what a, the large fee to fix it. And I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to do that, I, you have to stay, you have to stand here and I take your photo. So he's like, all right, that's fine. And that's, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's the whole story with that picture. This I took two days ago to my uh, a friend I've had since I was seven or eight and uh he just moved and he has this huge field next to his house and I was like all right this is where we're taking you know this photo we're uh, we're getting it done today this was uh a lot of it is just it started out I would just walk around town see what I saw you know a way to get out <laughs> and to see this guy it was so was, I actually walked by him I was like oh, I don't know and then I came back and he was still out and I was like I gotta ask him so I was just like, hey, do you mind if I take your phone? He's like, yeah, just make sure you get me getting a good swing. I don't know anything about golf. So, like, this might not be – it looked good in the photo, but I really don't know if this was a good swing. So if he sees this and is upset, I'm sorry, but I liked he's, it. He's tearing his swing apart right now. You just ruined I, this guy's golf career. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, yeah, I'm like, well, you hit the ball. Like, that's, that's the extent of my golf knowledge. And I'm not a goal. I was a baseball player. It looks like he's leaning a little hard on the left side of that left foot, but I'm not going to critique. I don't know. I'm no Tiger Woods. <laughs> yeah, I've, I have no idea. Um, some uh, some of my neighbors who have been uh, making masks for people, and uh, so I mean that has been one of the beautiful things is seeing like kind of the community come together and being like, okay, we're all like here for each other and we're doing what we can. Um, the, did, you, the, did you cross the bridge into New Hope at all? I didn't. I didn't. And I don't know. Maybe that's just me being like snobby and having like New Jersey pride. Like I'm not going over there to take photos, but. Um, Pennsylvania's got to pay me. <laughs> my, I, I had to, uh, my one friend um, who was the photo of him in his yard and his little brother, they're, they're in kind of New Hope area, but in the, I never really went into the town. Um, but you know, so there's always a next week, so I can. Ah, that was it. Was just me. I I know Lambertville's right there. I, I yeah. Spent 
many times in, in New Hope. And I know it's like you know, right across the bridge. It was just interesting, you know, I wanted to know for myself. Yeah, and that's the hard thing because both of our towns are very, um, like, touristy, summer touristy. Like, that's a big part for, you know, for the businesses. So just seeing, like, how how the restaurants and the, you know, the bars and how, like, how are they going to come back? How are they going to, is there, are people even when like the social distancing stuff, I have a feeling that people are still going to be uh, cautious. So it might not be able to come back in the same way it was. Yeah. And this is, I felt bad because I took this woman's photo and she's one of my neighbors, but the whole time I was just like obsessed with her dogs. And that's just cause like, you know, I love dogs, but I was like, oh yeah, no, no, don't worry. I'll get a photo of you too. But for, I have like on my, my SD card was like 60 photos of the dogs for the woman with like where you could see her. But um, yeah, it's uh, I think out of everyone who's probably doing all right with it is like the dogs of, you know, pet owners. Cause they're like, this is great. I get like 15 walks a day and like, you know, this is they're in heaven but uh it's funny you say that i totally relate to that um i've had so many instances where i stop someone on the street for a portrait and they're with somebody who i don't really want in the photo or i don't it, it was the one person i stopped and it's either a, a boyfriend girlfriend or a couple a group of friends and i'll take the image because I, I don't have it in me to be like nah i didn't mean you like you <laughs> Stand over to the side, like go stand over here, hold my bag. Yeah. Um, so it's funny to hear you say that, like it was it was totally about the dogs and you still go ahead and capture, you know, it makes me feel a little better that I'm not the only one that's still, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, that's something that you like, some people just like have that thing where you're like, oh, I need to get a photo of you, but you don't want to, you don't want to be like, you're fine. I guess if you want to be in the photo, that's cool. No, so you, you I, I mean, it, it ties it back in. You're going to look at it years from now, and now that it, it provides a sense of placement. You know, mm -hmm. you have the owner and you have the dogs together rather than just a pair of random dogs. It would change everything. You know, compositionally, you, it would change everything, and you would lose a sense of the environment, uh, the environment behind the photo. So yeah. I just found it interesting that, you know, you pointed that out. So I guess this was the, the first essential worker I – picture I took and this is my our uh, male woman Ursula and uh she's like a double essential worker because not only is she doing the U.S. you know post office but she also is working at a big supermarket so it's like just sort of talking with her and and again all the all the essential workers I've talked to and people who are doing jobs that are like you know essential for us to be surviving right now they're so they've all been so like grateful for me to take their photo and it just feels really odd that it's like you're not only you're delivering our mail you're working at a supermarket and you're thanking me for taking a photo of you while you're walking. like it, it just i don't know i think when this is all over there needs to be some serious uh pay raises in different sectors that aren't uh the traditional ones that have high incomes uh because if this is taught at least if this taught me anything and seeing that it's like yeah no like i don't know if uh you know people need to be buying their third Hamptons home, but like maybe like the people who are working as three jobs and a single mother could do with like maybe getting like a day off every once in a while. So. I mean, I think we, we put such a spotlight on how everything's going to change, you know, as far as us going to the grocery store, getting on the subway, but you're right. It shines a light on, you know, these other areas that it could change and should change, you know, people who are like, I think, a whole lot more parents are gonna be a lot lighter on those teachers and give them a lot more credit when you got three screaming kids running around and you gotta teach them algebra and you didn't even pass geometry. <laughs> so it yeah. really it shines a spotlight. And I think it, it, maybe this is what people need to see is that, hey, it knocked us off track and it's really shining the light on a lot of areas that people didn't really wanna look at. So I think that's an interesting perspective as well, you know, looking at, workers like this and are they being fairly compensated people that are not putting their lives at risk just so that we have the liberty to walk down to the bodega and yeah. get water for a dollar instead of going to cvs and paying three dollars yeah no i mean i saw something recently and it was showing that uh out of the 11 million 
undocumented immigrants in the U.S. Six million of them are registered as essential workers. And it's just like the, the disparity there that it's like, oh, well, these are undocumented. We, you know, we need to kind of get them out. But like, as soon as like stuff goes south, it's like, no, nah, they're essential. We really need them. We just don't want to give them all the rights and like benefits, but like we need them to do the dirty work for us. But I guess that's kind of how we've always done it in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, not to get too political. <laughs> My high school math teacher who I saw, I was uh, driving around and I just saw the, cause it was, this was sort of when it first hit and everything was closed, but McDonald's was open. So the drive through, I was like driving around and I just saw there was like 50 cars just backed up waiting to go through the drive through. And I just sat in that parking lot and took pictures of it for, and then I was like, my teacher came out and we were just like, yeah, can you believe this? This is uh, insane. You passed this class or no? Yeah, I mean, it was a math class. I'm like, not even joking, senior year. I looked at him, I was like, Matt, I'm never going to be using, you know, calculus, whatever. Like, just don't let me fail. He's like, all right, you just sit in the back and like, you know, read some books, do your English major stuff, like, and you're going to pass, but just, just shut up and like, you know, keep your head down. That, that's the stuff. I mean, you, you give us a little backstory on it and, and it begs the question, like, you know, that expression that he's looking at you, it's like, were you the kid that was a pain in the ass and you come uh, and now, yeah, no, now you sure. want to take my picture in the McDonald's <laughs> drive through Like, yeah. No, I was I was definitely paying the ass, but I was his advice, uh, <laughs> so he had to put up with me. But uh, other than that, it was like he was not having. Yeah, no, I, senior year he was just like, all right, we got what six months and you're out of here. Thank God. Some more essential workers. Uh, <laughs> this is my girlfriend who had to go back to Singapore, which so that whole long distance time difference has been rough but i'm pretty sure she's up right now watching i hope yeah uh so <laughs> i was walking by our gas station and it, that's the other weird thing not getting gas not driving and this guy he was like sitting and i was like hey do you mind if i take your pictures like yeah no worries i've been doing this all day i'm like you've been doing this all day how many people have come by and taken your photo he's like you know i'm pretty popular around here so apparently he had had like, he knew right where to go. He's like, what if I go in here and I put my hand up like this? And I'm like, I think that's a great idea. Let's see. And then the perfect look. But, Gas is, I wish I was driving around right now. Gas is so cheap. Right? No, that, that has been the one sort of like ridiculous thing. It's like, oh, I'm not paying. I haven't had to go to the gas station. And because my other work was, I was driving like, I would just drive, like I drive like 500 miles in three days. And it would just be like constantly like, enough guy yeah no i'm glad i don't have to do that but um yeah, this woman was like some people which i've kind of learned with because i'm not when i do portraits i'm not like one of the people who's like okay we're gonna you're gonna set up like this and i want you to turn this like that's just not how i operate also because i don't have a lot of experience with it so i'm usually like yeah you know you stand how you want like whatever you're comfortable with and this was her like look that she like right away went to. She's like, okay, I think we'll do this. And I was like, all right, that's like she had a lot of attitude. It was, and she had great shoes. So it was she's, work, she's working the doorway. <laughs> you might yeah. get a modeling con. Look, somebody, a modeling agent is watching this right now, and she's looking yeah, she's up that address. It, you know. It's interesting though, you know, just to see how each person's personality comes through. To um, and real quick, we did have a question just come in. Yep. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Bonnie is curious as to what lens you're using. So she's doing documentary as well. Stranded in sunny Florida. Bonnie, we, man, we're talking about snow up here tomorrow. Uh, so she has a different perspective, but she wants to know, can you, can you talk? I mean, a lot of people, you know, love it or hate it. The question as far as like gear, like it, it is, it's relevant. You know, what gear, what gear are you using? What focal length are you shooting at? So like, I've kind of gone back, like this was on a 30 like a 30 millimeter. Um, so I've mainly used 30 and a, it's right here. I think it's a it's 40. So it's a, I use micro four thirds. So it's a 42.5. So that's a 85, 35 millimeter equivalent. Um, and it's just like a nice portrait lens, but I like using like a wider angle just primarily. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I, a lot of them, which I kind of also realized like people definitely, you know, it's a little more comfortable for people where you can be further back and they don't have to worry about, like I was never getting like too close to people, but it is like the, 
for a lot of, like the further the better so if i'm like 12 feet away or what if they're like much more comfortable than if i'm just six so like this was this was on the 85 for those of you who are watching that are not from new jersey they they're bougie they do not pump their own gas for everyone else in all other 49 states you look at this and like this it can only be jersey yeah or what yeah i remember it was like jersey and was it like oregon or cal one there was like one other state and then they stopped and then it was just us so the guy the guy on my gas station on my block he he offers but i mean yeah. now nah, i can do it myself i kind of feel bad about like have like I know it's their job, but I'm like I feel like I can I can do this. You don't need to come out in the rain and the snow to like pump out. But um, <laughs> yeah, so this was the the place that got uh, it's a BBQ place in my town, and uh, I reached out to them asking if I could take their photo and just kind of go in and, and see what, what they were doing. And then these photos got picked up for uh, into it. So okay. he actually ended up. They, they gave him a modeling release. So it was like one of those things where it was such a random, I was just like, hey, Todd, can I come by and take your photo? He's like, yeah, sure, man, no worries. And I was like, Todd, I think they're going to give you like a decent amount of money for this. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, you can come by, take my photo whenever you want. Like, don't worry about it. Yeah, Todd, Todd's staying open extra hours now. So come Todd, by. Now. Todd is open. And fun fact about Todd, he was in a pop punk band in the 80s and his song got used in uh, the third season of Stranger Things. So uh, yeah, that was pretty good. When he told me that, I'm like, what? what? This is all. See, I mean, these are the stories. Like, I, I look at your images online and you don't get that. That's why, you know, it's so important to have these conversations with photographers. And not everything is just about learning technical and talking about f stops and aperture and, you know, our, uh, you know shutter speed. And it, it's interesting to see the story behind the images. And I, I love how. How engaged you are with this pe these people for, you know, keeping your distance and having such a respect for the guidelines and for out of respect for everyone in general and the people that you're shooting, but you're still able to capture. You're able to capture more during the age of social distancing than some people are pre-pandemic, which is, you know, amazing. I think I, I do think a big part of it is that it it comes through in the photo if you've had any sort of human interaction with the person before the photo has been taken like i do know you know some people that's not their style and that's fine that it's like they're like all business it's like okay stand here thank you like and that's but like i i just feel more comfortable taking people's photos once i've talked to them or once i've like you know even if it's just something brief so and then i think it kind of puts them off their guard a little and it's it's a little easier to get like an authentic moment and uh let's see yeah like this guy i feel like he was just born to have his photo taken during a pandemic like this is our local like apothe <laughs> apothecary drugstore and it's like i walked in and i was like hey do you, do you mind if i like take your photo and he's like yeah no worries mask on mask off i was like but let's have the mask on and i like almost was like you want to Fix your like. Do you care if your glasses are like coming down a little? And then I was always like, nah. It, it like makes it look better. I like the look more. Um, but yeah, he was like, I yeah, love this, it. Our little local pharmacist just killing it. And even uh, just the the framing of the toilet paper, the Lysol. First of all, I don't even know who has that much in stock anymore. I have to wait in line to get a single roll of toilet oh, that's paper. Like exactly what I was thinking. Because like the giant, which is five, you know hundred yards away from the it's like completely wiped out and it's like the thunderdome in there but then i went into here and it was just like he was throwing it at you yeah i mean i, I same thing around here I, I go into like the like the dollar stores in the bodegas and there's walls of toilet paper and cleaner and you go in and it's and again it's like without getting like too political it's like you go into these huge stores like target and they have stanchions set up for the cleaning section yeah and these people are waiting two hours in line just to get into the store and then another half an hour in line just to get a, a pack of toilet paper. And you can go up the street and support a guy who, you know, cares so much about his community that if he has to close his store, he's leaving a, a sign with his cell phone number on the gate and yeah. he's fully stocked. So it's, it's, it's interesting to look at that dynamic as well. Yeah. And like, if, 
it's nice you touched on that because like a big part of I was like okay I want to take I want to it started off I was like I want to take some photos of the restaurants and like try to promote the local restaurants in my town because you know it's a small town I like food I, I know a lot of the, the people who own them and stuff and I've worked in them and it is it's like if these places go out of business the only places that are like in this economy that are going to be able to expand and open up places are going to be like franchises. Cause they're the only ones who are going to have the capital and the thing to be like, yeah, like when everyone is doing, we're buying up like, so yeah, like that little sort of like mom and pop restaurant is just going to turn into like a Wawa or it's going to be like a Chick-fil-A or something. And it's like, you, you, yeah. it, hopefully people like you hope that in times like these people would be like, going the super the opposite way and being like oh we're just supporting these places because like target walmart like they're good you know they're gonna be fine like maybe mr walmart is gonna have to sell like one of his jets to like help keep the but like they're they're you i'm not worried about them but then like you know the places where it's like they've been open 25 years they're a staple of your whatever but they are the ones who are like yeah and like we can't afford to have three months without business like that's not how we work yeah. So uh, this was in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So most of the photos have been like in my in my little town and around. But uh, last week, for the first time, I like got out. I went. I drove up uh, and was like up along the border with New York State and Pennsylvania. And I was in Scranton, and I saw these guys just on the corner talking with their masks on. There's something about them. I was like, I was just driving by, and then I pulled the car over and got out. I was like, Do you mind if I take your photo? And they were like yeah sure where are you from i was like jersey and they're like oh you got a bad down there good thing you came up here i was like yeah <laughs> sorry if i'm bringing it with me but um yeah. <laughs> with the composition and the mask they had on the yeah. blue and red i can't wear that mask in my neighborhood yeah no that that's like the all oh my god i yeah i when i'm wearing my mask uh <laughs> when i would <laughs> i would i worked out in oakland california for a while and uh I like you know I have long hair and I would be playing soccer and I would be driving and I had like a blue bandana on and then some car pulled up next to us me and my friends in it and I was just like why is that guy just staring at me and I was like oh boy first rule uh, all right yeah and, uh, you gotta be careful for sure yeah definitely he looks like he could hold his own <laughs> right he's that was his corner yeah this was uh. It's one of those, another one of the early photos I took. And I was, I am really interested in the fact that this whole thing is going to have on like children and kids who are like, just, they're not able to understand why they're not able to see grandma and grandpa or go on play dates or like, you know, why is the park closed? Why am I not able? I, I really do think there's going to be some, like probably like 50 years from now, psychologists are going to be like talking about things and it's going to all sorts of trends and stuff. My one friend is, He's way into that, so we, we talk about it all the time. But uh, it's just so interesting, like the the rainbow and the butterfly in this image. Yeah, and the the just girl expressions like pressed up against the glass, like it's yeah. I mean, these are images that are amazing now, and in twenty thirty years, it's like the stock's just gonna go way up, and you're gonna look back on these and be so glad that you went out and captured it and did it such justice. I'm glad I just, just for my sanity, getting out and doing something, because it was yeah. like, really, that was a big part of it. It was like, okay, I can't go another day of like, just as much as I love binge watching The Office, there's only so many <laughs> days I can do that before I'm like, I'm 23 years old, I have no future, I need to go out and do there you something. Go. So, uh, yeah, and uh, let's see. this is uh, my, my good friends and his brothers in their house, and um yeah, the, the little brother was like, oh, am I going to be on, like, the news? And I was like, I, I don't think so, Jack. Like, <laughs> like if, it, if it happens, I'll let you know. And then, I like, two days ago, I got something from CBS that they're like, oh, we want to use your stuff for something. So I was like, hey, Jack, you, you get to be on the news now. He's like, I knew it. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's great. At least one of us knew it. That's great. Let's see. And, uh, yeah, this is my parents. There uh, it is. Yeah. So that I, image, I mean, I, I first time I looked at it, it's so – just perfect yeah definitely this is probably the one i've gotten the most love for and it's like it's just funny because it was just one of those things i was like we're all in our own room and i walked in to say okay what are they doing and i'm like oh this is great and uh 
they're definitely like my dad and my mom they're definitely getting like a little tired of me like walking around the house with a camera like they were like what are you doing like, this is not worth it and i was like no it's great like how you guys are in your own separate rooms one is red the other's blue but uh oh, yeah, that's perfect i think yeah that's it for my stuff man that was so that was a wonderful trip i mean honestly i a lot of times I just sit here and, and I, I view and there's so much I wanted to know. I find, I find myself every, with every image I look at, I want to know more about the story behind it. I want to know the story behind you and what you got, got you into it, what motivates you. And, and, you know, like I said, not to pad your ego, but there's a reason that news media is reaching out to you. you know, there's a lot of people out there capturing their own view of the pandemic. And it's just such a, you know, it's a it's a perfect balance between just being genuine and and finally crafting these images. I mean, they're it's not fine art photography, but it is fine art. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you for for all the kind words and the opportunity to to talk more about it. Uh, feels a little surreal, not gonna lie, but uh, you know. yeah, I mean, we're on a virtual webinar talking about a photography project that is about the reason we are on a <laughs> virtual <laughs> webinar right now. It's like the whole thing is mind blowing. It's like, so, I mean, I have no doubt that one day I'm going to be on, you're going to be on a stage and I'm going to be watching you while you're on stage. And I'm like, remember <laughs> yeah, remember when we, we had that, you know, what, when you were your thing via webcam, um, anybody watching, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in um it's just you know wonderful wonderful series um i'm gonna drop your your website in here for everyone to look at so for those of you uh, that that are on and, and danny if you could drop that into the facebook comment section please um we'll get your website out to everybody and your instagram uh as well i'll get your instagram in there as well thank you um, so please check out i mean this is the kind of work that needs to be seen on a computer, whatever screen, the largest screen you have. Um, are you looking into printing these images? Are you gonna make a book? Where are you going with the series from here? Yeah, honestly, I really don't know at this point. Um, I was, I was kind of thinking that it would be interesting to, uh, my kind of big idea was that when this is all over, try to have some sort of show in my like town in one of the local spaces and like, you know, the, the, the money could go back into the town or something like into like a small business, something like that. Um, but other than that, I really don't have too much of an idea of what I like, if I want to print it or, or what, but, uh, I, I mean, I will say this, this is the kind of work that the medium was created for like beautiful. If there's any of my brands out there, paper printers, um, if there's anybody out there that is a printer, print master, I mean, this is reach out, look at his work. I mean, this is the kind of work that really, it needs to be held. It's tangible. Um, if you do come out with anything printed, please, please keep us updated on your social media. Um, I'll add it to my, to my stack of books over there in the corner. Um, but Matthew, thank you for joining us for everybody who tuned in. Thank you. Um, we dropped his website and his Instagram in the chat here. Definitely looking for more of this series. Um, I'm going to ask you to give a quick plug because we have you on here and you have another series that you're working on that I'm a huge fan of as well. The, uh, the Gothic series. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, that's like my main thing. Uh, it's like a Northern, Northern Gothic. So I was an English major. So it's kind of like a play on the themes of Southern Gothic literature and um, just sort of different landscape photos uh, dealing with decomposition transformation of uh, buildings and structures and how kind of uh, industri industrial cities have adapted or not adapted to sort of the new reality of uh, you know the U.S. not being the sort of industrial power that it once was like that we're not you know there's Bethlehem Steel has now been turned into a casino and, you know, the Allentown, the factories have been shut down, or, you know, just, so it's kind of a, an exploration of that. Um, but yeah, and that, all that works on my you know, website and my Instagram and stuff. Perfect. Now we did have a question come in. Austin uh, 
wants to know how you pick your subjects. I think we talked about it a little earlier. Um, so for this series in particular, and if maybe you want to address in general for your projects, how you how you pick your subjects? Yeah, um, a lot of it is just stuff that I'm personally interested in. So like, you know, I've done stuff where I did uh, one project I found out about through my father. He, he showed it to me. It was, uh, they were doing a, a photography and video sort of documentary thing on uh, victims of sexual abuse and uh, domestic violence. And I think that's just a story that needs to be told. And so, it, and, or I did uh, stuff on refugee and immigrant youth in Oakland, California. And it's, and I, I, you know, I did that because I was working with refugee and immigrant youth and I was, and it was around the time of the election and I was seeing all these sort of disparaging xenophobic racist things about a group of people who from my experience have been you know lovely hardworking people who you'd want to be living in your country and so I was like okay if I can take photos to try to push back on that narrative but yeah most of my stuff just comes from kind of my own personal desire of like what do I want to be spending time photographing perfect well, Matthew, uh, thank you again. Uh, again, thank you to everybody who's out there watching. Um, so website, Instagram, we have it in the chat. We have it on Facebook. Um, if there's anything on behalf of B&H we can do to get your, your work out there, to get your, you know, your whole mission and your projects out there, you are now part of the family. We welcome you back to speak anytime. Um, that being said, you guys have tuned into another installment of the now virtual event space. Uh, so everybody be safe out there, keep creating, keep the motivation. We do have a full list of virtual events that we're gonna be doing. If you look at the BH event space website, you can register there. Matthew, can't thank you enough. We're gonna keep following your work online and everybody be safe, have a good night.